All right, so the first step I'm going to do, you'll kind of see this here, is I'm going to get something to mark this. I'm going to mark and cut off this end. And I've got an angle grinder, so we'll be able to do that. And then uh, I'm also going to possibly measure the inside of my um, cabinet. I already got some pre-made cabinets for these guys. And I will cut off some of this height. Although I, I, one of the debates I'm having is I might end up not cutting that height yet, but adjusting these guys so they're fairly close to the bottom, kind of like this. So there's just a, maybe a half an inch or three quarters of an inch up from the bottom for both of the transformers like this. And then this guy will of course be kind of, you know, somewhere in here as well. But uh, that way I can cut off another inch or so from the top and give a little bit more room in there. And uh, yeah, so for now he's getting a drink. So that will be the next part in a little bit. I'll come back. I'll have the L brackets. All I'm going to have to do is drill a couple of holes here and install the L brackets through like this. And then I'll kind of be trying to position it. But as you can see here, I still have a pretty good feel. That's the way I'm going to line that up. I will have all of my pots and my input jacks across here. So things are coming along fairly well on that. But I'll come back a little bit and show you after I've cut and adjusted that. Okay, I've cut that. And as I wanted to do, I want it to be just slightly smaller. And it's perfect than that. And all I did was I really just, I took the, a Sharpie, um, oops, took a Sharpie and I laid it against this, tight against this edge and then just marked a little mark what was, would have been, in, you know, inside. And this side I don't want it to be uh, inside exactly, and, but it still does fit in there. And the bigger point was really that I just want it to be roughly the exact width of this size, it's just this side right here. Next step is going to be to take each of these guys, I've got my measuring devices and whatnot, and I'm going to try and measure what I think the slot needs to be for the size of these holes. It will be on the bottom side, of course, these guys like that. And uh, then I'll also mark out where each of these uh, of the holes go for the mounting brackets as well, uh, so that I can um, get that figured out. So I can do that right here really quickly, and I will go cut it and measure it and see how that turns out. So I'll let you guys follow along at home. So the first thing I'll do is get a measurement. Um, I'm going to want the power transformer to be, let's see, I believe it was going to be on this side because I just had it and now I forgot. So let's double check that. Again, double checking never hurts. We'll put this aside for a minute. And we'll set this back in the way we had it. We've got all of our pots and inputs this way. We've got, our, yeah, this is right. So again, always try and keep a mental image of what you're planning. This doesn't have to be perfect, but when I go to measure these out, I will make it more precise. But that was the way I want it to be. So what I can do now is I can visually slide this back. So that should give me enough room. And the good thing is if I cut a little small, I can always cut more. But if I cut a little big, I'm in a world of hurt. So there you can see that's the first measurement. That will be for the power transformer. And now to just give myself a sense of scale for the second guy. I also will have to line up the holes for the... Um, Try and line. Oh, somebody did that. I'll zoom in a moment. And I'm going to resume. At this point now, uh, I had kind of lined up the first half, but I got sidetracked by something. Uh, so you should be able to see now. I'm going to quickly measure. Uh, actually, I want to use this guy.
trying to think. If I if I line this up one, then mark. Those are my four drill marks. These are going to be my cut marks uh, in this inner area here that will hopefully fit this guy. And I almost always have to go with a file and kind of clean it up a little bit to get that last little bit. So we'll get that measured. Now we're going to measure this one. Now, if we go back and look, I've, I've cut this one this way. I need to have this one alternating, right? Uh, to avoid hum induction between two transformers, you want their cores rotated at 180 degrees. So I'm going to want to put this one roughly on the same line. So there we go, first pass of the cuts. It looks like the holes are big enough, and the bit that I chose is a bit small, but that's super easy to go uh, a little bit wider. I just need to uh, get the exact size of these screws, and it'll be good. So as you can see, I measured this one big enough to give room for these wires to not be pinched, but you can't see it yet, but effectively that'll also mean that the screws will still have a place to anchor inside of here and here. I'll get this a little bit of alcohol when I'm done and wipe off all these marks, but uh, there we go. So first part of manufacturing done. That's uh, was a good couple hours of just planning, uh, setting it up, and cutting and going and thinking it through, but uh, all of these little steps end up causing work. So there you have it. Okay, so now you should be able to see, I've just got them kind of temporarily mounted, but if I bolt these guys and get a couple bolt, uh, you know, uh, angle iron, uh, clips like I was talking about, angle brake brackets, I've got these kind of just started effectively. I'll tighten them down all the way once I get the that mounted, it will effectively mount something like this. That will put, this choke's gonna come through a hole here, the rest of them will go through holes on the back side. This means that this will be able to sit as long as I kind of keep this beyond behind that a little bit. That gives me room for the this to be hidden behind it and the transformers to be up above. Meanwhile, uh, if we rotate this way a little bit so you can see the back side, I will have, I'll just kind of tilt that back down now. I will have the transformer uh, wires coming down somewhat like this. Okay, there, so as you can see, I've got them done here and here, and I may put a third one in the middle for more stability as I get closer. Uh, we'll have to see, um, but there's that part. Now the next thing I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna pull up a, a cabinet that I have here that's kind of my standard size. I'm gonna test that out and make sure that it will fit on top of the chassis as well in there. So we'll get that set up here in a second. We'll look, if not, I may have to cut some of this top strip off, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, if you can see this pretty well, the uh, underside of this kind of lines up with the screwdriver I'm bringing in from the side. I could maybe show this, I guess it's a little more visible in the shot. It's under here, you can see that there's a good half an inch or more here that we're overshooting the cabinet. I'll probably want to go a little lower so I have plenty of room, so maybe, you know, almost an inch and a half, just so I have some clearance above here as well. So we'll look at that here in a second, mark it off, and then I'll cut that off. Okay, garage door open and get it to cool down in here a little bit. But now you can see it's in there. We're good to go. And I'll pull that out. I haven't, obviously I haven't set where it's going to go yet, but you can see it's a little uneven. I'm not great at using the angle grinder to cut things, but we're closer. So now I'll go ahead and set this aside, pull it out. Uh, I did mark tentatively, if you remember, where I thought this might go, which is a black mark there. Get that out of the way. So effectively, I was hoping to kind of put it where this would line up about here and here. But I don't want to mark that and set it yet until I have actually gotten my um, 
all of my sockets up in here. So uh, effectively, if you look, I can actually tell pretty quickly. I have power. This actually is gonna be good to help me know exactly where things are. I have the power transformer here, choke here, and then I have the output transformer. So I effectively want my sensitive end as far away from the power end as possible. So I'll be putting my tube sockets down at this end uh, for, the, or, so for the preamp and the phase inverter. Then I will have my um, rectifier and my four power tubes down at this end. So uh, you know now I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a large piece of um, painter's tape lay that across this end here, and then I'm gonna try and guess what I think will be a good distance to measure out to gap in between each of these tubes. You don't want them too close because there can be some interaction between tubes, but you don't want them too far because then you, you know, you're gonna run out of space. So it's kind of that balance between space and, and whatnot. And you do want some separation, although I've heard, had some people say sometimes you want your phase inverter closer to the power tube side. But you know, ultimately, what I'll probably do is put the first one as close to that edge as possible and then measure what that distance roughly is that I think would be safe and then just space them evenly about that amount. Now just eyeballing it, that looks like about here. Then we're gonna give room for the output transformer to hook up through here and then into the output on the back. And we'll also have power, it's gonna come in right about here as well. Uh, effectively, that, that, that layout needs to be designed, but I want my output transformer or, uh, hook up here from the audio side so that that kind of stays a little bit away from either of those. But I don't know if I will swap, I, I might just do this uh, because of the phase inverter being less sensitive and less important as the preamp tubes over here. Uh, this, if I recall now quickly, this is going to be the EF86 uh, low power pentode. And these three were going to be, this is the main input for the tremolo, and these are the two are the parts of the oscillator part of the tremolo. Uh, that tremolo's got a lot going on, because if you look, each triode's got one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six different stages in the oscillator, whereas the EF86 only has a single stage in it. Then our phase inverter, of course, has two stages, one for the uh, um, one side of the... Um, out of phase and the other for the other side of the out of phase so that they, you get each half of these tubes to magnify equally. Now that's also another theory point. In theory these will be grouped somewhat like that for the power tubes. Two of them will be magnifying on the upstroke, the other two will be magnifying on the downstroke and that's why they get the out of phase signals to allow them to work kind of in tandem. That's what push-pull does. Uh, and then of course that's my rectifier so for the power rectification. All right, so this is looking like that might be a little bit better now that I've got this. This is part of why I, kept, I said I'm just going to kind of keep going one step at a time and getting closer so that I can see where I'm at when I'm doing. So, of course, this guy's going to be up a little bit higher, kind of bolted in about there. But this way, there's still clearance. I can see there's plenty of room for my tubes to go in here. But the heat is going to be near the transformers themselves. The transformers themselves will generate some heat as well, but that will all go up and out the back vent, which will be roughly about in here. And so our heat should be good. And it looks like in spacing wise, I think it'll all fit as well. So this is definitely kind of an odd layout. It's similar to the way Vox does it, um, but they have, they tend to have a quite a bit bigger chassis and they're working, you know, I'm trying to build this into a fairly small cabinet with very tight space constraints. And we'll see if I can pull it off. If not, I have all the parts, I can go get a different chassis and try again. But uh, there you have it. We're gonna now get the tape, like I said, and put it across there because I feel comfortable with this positioning roughly right now. I've just clamped it down temporarily on the work table, but I will screw it and bolt it down only after I've gotten to that stage where I have the uh, tubes all in, and then I can come back with this and, and readjust, make sure that I have plenty of space. I won't put the tubes in, I mean the tube sockets, but I'll make sure I have plenty of space both front and back, because I want to have space back here uh, that you can't see easily right now, but so that I can drill a hole and run the wires through, but that it doesn't come kind of past this edge here, that it kind of sits in just a little bit inside of that edge on this back side that you can't see. So, uh, yeah, this is the thing. You have to kind of measure uh, twice or three or four times, think it through carefully when you're doing a brand new layout of something you've never done before. Uh, but uh, moving on, we'll see what we get once we get all the tube sockets uh, in place. There you go.